I want to teach you how to kill big bucks by using the weather. It's a strategy that I've used since the early 90s, 1993 to be exact. Going back to my days of listening to the marine weather forecast up in the Thumb area in Michigan, up in Saginaw Bay, to hear what the wind direction was. Or I'd look at the Oakland Press, a newspaper where I used to live down in the Detroit area near Waterford, about an hour from there, and uh, look for the forecast. We didn't have much to go by back then, but even back then I knew that if I learned to hunt by the weather, I could make sure that I was hunting bucks during the daylight and not waiting for them all day, not going to see them because they're only moving after dark. So very important that you understand how to hunt by the weather. It's proven time and time every single year for me going back. And I found some really easy ways to learn how to do that and what signs to look for. You know, the what, when, and where of how to use the weather to help you. I'm going to talk about right now really quick. You know, I have a book, All Weather Whitetails. I wrote that in 2018. 2016, I had Outdoor Life contact me to create my algorithm for using the weather because I talked about it so much. I talked about looking at the forecast saying, in the next 45 days, if this weather held, which it never does, this is what you would do and why. These are the, in a two week period, these are the green dot days, I used to do that too, or this is a go day, this is a hold day, and this is a no day. Looking at this weather forecast, it's something that's worked for me for so long. That's why Outdoor Life contacted me. That's why I wrote that main feature article in their November rut issue. It's either 2016 or was it 2015? Dylan, was it when you were on? I think it was right before I was there. So 2015. So yeah, it's even going back further than I thought. But bottom line is, that's why they contact me. I've been doing this for a long time. And that's finally why HuntWise contacted me to help develop HuntCast and infuse my algorithm in HuntCast um, now uh, almost four years ago, three and a half years ago. So it's been a long time. So what to look for? I'm looking for major weather change. I'm looking for cold fronts. Sometimes deer move before a front, but not always. If the wind's going to pick up, if there's a big blizzard coming, Deer have a way of knowing not to be out in the field. It's not like they have a weather forecast or something that goes off a light bulb in their head to say, hey, don't go out there. They feel, deer are creatures of tangible, meaning that they feel the weather. They're out there every day, all day, no shelter. So they know when the humidity is changing, when the wind speed is changing, when the wind direction is changing, cloud cover, the amount of light in the sky, they know something's going on and they can predict it pretty well based on the temperature they're there. And they probably feel what weather's coming because they live in it. Pretty easy for them to do that. And they also know when not to go out. So you could have the same barometric pressure and they know when to go one day, when not to go in another day, same pressure system, you know, same number, same moon. They know when to go, when not to go. It has nothing to do with the moon either. They know when to go, especially move during the daylight. And what I'm looking for are temperature changes and drops of 7 to 10 degrees or more. I'm looking for the more extreme the weather, the better. High winds, thunder and lightning, blizzard conditions, sleet, hail. The more extreme, the better when it comes to getting deer to move because now they're pinned down. They're not feeding. They're missing quality feeding, so they want to move when it's done. They burn stress, energy, miss feeding opportunities. So they're losing energy all around and they can't wait to replace that and they start moving. The bottom line is weather does that. People say, well, weather doesn't affect deer movement. How many times you see deer moving around during a blizzard or 50 mile an hour winds or when it's 90 degrees in Indiana on November 18th? The bottom line doesn't matter if it's in the middle of the rut, if it's super hot, deer breeding at night, they still move. So in a 24 hour period, yes, deer will move the same amount. We're talking during daylight, that's the difference. Whether it's daylight movement or not, not movement in a 24 hour clock or not, but movement during the daylight. Obviously, they're still going to rut at night, even during hot weather, windy weather. They'll just rut at night. Still going to breed does. Maybe they won't run as long. Maybe the does won't run away as long either. Once you have that take place, that change take place, make sure you hit the woods. I actually like moderate winds, not no wind. I'm looking for those breaks in the weather. Again, the more extreme, the better. During the front, if there's breaks in the rain, the precipitation, the snow, hail, sleet for several hours or more, I get to the stand. If it's still windy out, I'm looking for the lee side of the woods where it's calm. I'm looking for the lee side of the ridge where it's calm. I'm trying to get out of the wind. There's even been some wind studies that show that deer sometimes move a little bit more when it's windy. Well, they're not moving right up on top of a ridge where you're going to have to hold on to the oak tree you're standing on, your favorite stand. They're not there out in the open. They're moving to get out of the wind. I've seen deer move out of a westerly facing hollow to get into a southerly facing hollow, not because of the sun, but they're moving over a saddle for over 40 deer that day. It was deer muzzleloader season, December in Wisconsin, 
2010. And they were moving just to get out of the wind. Extremely wind-faced here. Just jump over that saddle on the other side about 100 yards, and now they're out of the wind. Wind kills whitetails. Wind actually frostbites whitetail. Frostbites their ears. That can happen. It's easy to do. Dylan, you shot a, a buck uh, three years ago, maybe, or four in North three, Dakota? Four. Yeah, something like that. And you thought he was this wide because his antlers stuck out over his ears. And then you get up to him and his antlers were this wide because his ears were, how much do you think were gone on each side? An inch or two? Two or three inches off of each side for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot. And it's probably frostbit. I mean, someone didn't clip them. <laughs> so they, they probably, and that's what happens. They get burned off um, due to frostbite. So bottom line is they need to get out of the wind. So look for areas that you can get out of the wind, even if it's super windy. Again, the backside of a swamp, the backside of a big stand of conifer, backside of a ridge. You can get out of the wind, even in flat areas, you can find locations like that, a big conifer, big woods, big swamps, and get on the backside. I've seen that. I was traveling south on 127 in central Michigan, big giant fields, and then I come upon this spot where there's field in the distance but then just a little patch of upland cover and all the deer were on the highway side in the middle of the day or middle of the morning on the non-windy side so imagine the wind just buffeting that other side and they chose to be by the highway because it broke the wind i'm sure that's what it was the bottom line is look for those breaks that's when you head to the woods don't worry about the moon don't worry about the barometric pressure they, they can lead to lies and i'm not saying the barometric pressure doesn't indicate good days to hunt at times because it does reflect good days, but sometimes it can lead you astray, meaning there could be a front coming three days later. But if everything's broken down, everything's calmed down, it could be a really great time to hunt, even though the barometric pressure's low. Also, after that front goes through the first day, first day and a half, maybe two days, that front just went through, deer were pressed down, they'd miss quality feeding opportunities, they feed five times in a 24 hour period, they miss feedings, they miss going out in the big open fields, big open woods to feed and gorge themselves at night because the weather was so bad, well, then obviously when the wind breaks, they're ready to feed. Well, they're not ready to do that the second, third, fourth day especially. So depending on what's going on in the moon, who knows? If there's great weather and a bad moon, go hunt. If there's a good moon, bad weather, don't hunt. Really let the weather guide you to success. It really will lead you to success. Forecast your hunt. That's pretty cool. You can look at the forecast and tell when to hunt. You can see these major weather changes. Really cool thing is you can look at even mornings. You'll look at a, a week and you'll say, you know, the weather just changed on Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, it's the same highs. But all of a sudden on Tuesday, the clouds clear out overnight, wind dies down, and Tuesday morning for some reason is 32 degrees, 33 degrees, 34. Well, every other morning is in the 40s. That's the morning to hunt. Even just look for those morning lows, even though everything else is the same during the day. Look for that morning low. You can look at those areas in the forecast. You know what's cool is some of the weather uh, stations, you can look at the hourly forecast on the hour for 72 hours out. And the wind forecast is the most dependable portion of the forecast. How much precipitation you get. I mean, heck, this year we had drought. You know how many times our forecast had 70, 80% chance of rain here that we didn't get this year? You never know on the precipitation how much, what it's going to be, especially when it's 30, 40, 50 degrees. But you do know which way the wind's coming because those are major jet streams and major influences of weather that take place across the world, across the country, from North America to South America. There's, there's big major movements that dictate what, what way the wind's going. You can depend on that. So I developed all of this and stuck it into HuntCast so that you can get the HuntWise app, and download HuntCast, look at HuntCast, and it gives you a good indication of what days are gonna be good and what days are gonna be bad. And you can get that up to 10 days in advance because those major weather systems can be seen 10 days out. You might see an 18 degree temperature drop a week from now. That might end up being 24, it might end up being eight, but there's going to be a drop and it might be the next day or the day before, but you're gonna see it coming. It's something you can plan your hunt on, even seven to 10 days in advance. So you can really forecast your own hunt. That's what's the beauty of this. And then where do you hunt? Look at it this way. You focus on food in the afternoon and deer moving towards food because they're hungry. Look at deer being active back in their bedding areas and up and browsing during the morning. That's why I like a lot of times scoring the day. If you're hunting in a bedding area all day, always remember that the closer you get to dark, the less likely you are to see deer because they're all moving to food sources. So I'd rather sit in a bedding area in the morning with in mind how I'm going to get out to not spook deer, to get around to a food source related stand, a movement, food source related movement in the afternoon so I can get a high score for the morning and the evening. 
If I'm sitting in a food source stand all day, that probably means I went in the morning and spooked them out because they're already in the food source. So I might've already wrecked the afternoon. But even if I got in without spooking anything, I'm not gonna see anything in the morning because they're all moving to their bedding areas. They're moving away from that food source. So you get a low score in the morning, high score you know, later in the afternoon when they come back, if you didn't spook them in the morning. And it's the same on the flip. And that's why there's some of those stands, about 10, 15% of all stands, where it's that perfect X in the move in the middle between food and bedding. That's the stand you might sit on all day, but there's very few of those. So always ask yourself, should I be sitting in this spot all day? Is this a food source related movement? Then you should be there in the afternoon. Is it a bedding area movement? Then you should be there in the morning. And if you can't tell the difference between the two, probably because there's a lot of pressure applied, there's not consistent food sources or bedding areas. And I don't personally hunt somewhere else. I can find that consistency in a swamp in the UP in Michigan where the food source is the bait piles are the bait piles that are a half mile to a mile away in all directions. And I'm hunting that bedding area central that encompasses several hundred acres. And I'm hunting funnels in a swamp that dictate how they move through there. So I know that I'm getting in there in the morning waiting for the deer to come back to me. And I know that last couple of hours, I'm probably not going to see a deer because they're all moving away from my position going to those bait piles. So even on public land, you can find that, let alone build it on private land. Again, morning focus on bedding areas before the deer get there in the morning you're waiting for them to come back and then find us somewhere that you can sneak in where deer are moving towards food plots and i look at with food not a food plot but a food source here's a food source well you could be hunting this trail you could be hunting this trail you could be hunting this trail this trail this trail try to get into an area where you can encompass the most trails coming down to that food source and blow your scent to one side or the other based on the wind yeah, that wind direction here, there. And now the closer you get to the food source, the better, but you can't get so close to the food source that you spook the deer out of the food source when you get in or out of your stand. That's a trick. The closer you get to the food source, the more you're at the bottom of that funnel of movement to that food source. That's where I want to be in the afternoon, and then I want to be back in that bedding area. I think that buck is going to in the morning. So that's how you hunt after that major weather change, which is how I hunt all year long. I try to hunt the weather all season long, and that puts me into a high window of success, meaning that I'm hunting those seven, eight, nine, 10 out of 10 days. Again, I developed the algorithm. It was out of score of 70, and you weighted the uh, temperature change, the extremity of weather, values for extremity, the wind speed change, ultimate wind speed change, not effective wind speed at the time of hunting, consistency of days in the field before it changed, put all that together, it spits out a score. And I find looking back, my top 40 bucks, it would be in that four years old of age or older. On average, you're shot at about an eight, eight and a half out of 10 day. And I found that no one, two, three, four score days adds up to one or two really high quality days. If I could choose five good weather days to hunt the entire year, I would do so over 20 bad days because those five good days are gonna bring success. Probably the first one, second, third, fourth, somewhere around there, and I'm gonna have a good hunt. I, there's some stands I can't wait to sit there in the rut, but I'm not gonna go into them just because it's a rut. There's some great food source stands that I wanna sit in the October lull, like mid-October, early October. There's some great bedding area stands that I'd love to go sit in, and I might even know a buck might be going into that location, but I'm not gonna go in there just to sit or just because it's a good stand or just because it's the rut just because there's a good food source. I'm gonna go in there because the weather told me to. And when I go in, I call that a 40, 50% sit. And I go in knowing that I have an extremely high chance of shooting that mature buck that's relating to that movement. And you can too, if you hunt by the weather, kill bucks at a very high percentage and predictable level of success this season and beyond. Yeah, all right, dude, let's go hunting. Yeah, let's go. I appreciate you guys watching the YouTube channel, but I don't know if everyone knows everything that we have to offer, whether it's on whitetailhabitatsolutions.com, our website, or WHS Wildlife Blends, our seed company. Also, Instagram you can check out. I'm very active on Instagram, putting strategies on there, photos of what we do every day. Uh, much more active there than Facebook. But our seed, web classes, books, clients, Articles, I have over 600 articles on whitetailhabitatsolutions.com, everything whitetail strategy. Of course, we have hats on there, and then make sure to check us out on Instagram again. But lots of stuff to offer. We're always coming out with new things, and this isn't the end of it. We have more things coming soon. Make sure to check us out.